I'm John Batchelor. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of Opinion Journal. Looking forward to the many segments ahead for you, Mary, discussing this story. Right now, we have a rumor. And the rumor is best for the announcement by Mrs. Clinton that she is a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States. We're told that it's Saturday or Sunday already. They're denying us information, Mary. Or Didn't maybe Monday when Rubio announces. Maybe, yes, any time. Does this feel spontaneous to you? Do you no. feel like they rushed this out? That Why didn't we know about this before? I mean, I had to, I've had to rebuild my weekend now, Mary. I've got oh, a, really? a focus. You're going to wait around? All, all four hours Saturday on oh, Mrs. Clinton. Please, I'm I, just going to go do my so grocery shopping, all right, John. Mona's here to help us. Mona Charon, the National View Online joins. Mona has focused on the possibility of Mrs. Clinton for years. In fact, Mona, you were born for this. A very good evening to you, Mona. Hello, John. Great to be with you. Hi, Mary. The technical term, it's very dry, but they use it all the time, and I, I really found sound important when I can use a Politico term. I really, I puff myself up and say, wow, I sound like Politico. You are sitting up very straight. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the technical term is identity politics. Mm. Mona, what, what are identity politics, and how does that help Mrs. Clinton's Saturday or Sunday announcement. Good evening to you, Mona. Good evening to both of you. So identity politics is a fancy name for a kind of dumb um, approach to politics that has come to dominate, uh, alas, in the last several decades, meaning that you don't focus on your proposals or your ideas for the country, but you focus instead on the group that you belong to and you claim that you speak for that group or that your election represents something very important for you know, the advancement of your particular group. So Hillary Clinton is running to be the first woman president, and that will be on all the bumper stickers, and that will be the theme that it's time, that it's time that this country had a woman president and that this somehow is important. And therefore, we will just gloss over all the little things, like little pesky details, like whether she's honest, whether she has anything to contribute, whether she broke the law, whether she, you know, destroyed that server with a hammer, you know, all those things. Well, I, I suppose she's not asking if it's time for a competent woman. I guess that's not the bumper sticker, huh, Mona? <laughs> for, no, exactly. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's such an insult um, to our intelligence, right? I mean, we're, we're all grown-ups. Um, we're all happy to vote for anybody, pink, blue, yellow, fe female or male, as long as they are competent and as long as they share our values and seem to be of good character and so forth. I mean, it is, it is just part of the left's um, appeal, and, a, and, a, and it's a very, I think, very destructive um, appeal, um, that, uh, that they can claim to speak for particular whole particular groups of people. And, um, you know, I remember writing a column um, after, uh, during the 2012 uh, uh, Republican political convention uh, when um, Condoleezza Rice gave a speech, uh, and, and it was, it, she was so raucously cheered she, that they practically, the Republicans practically carried her around the, the um, auditorium on their shoulders. They were so thrilled with her. Um, because she was, um, she gave a very eloquent talk about her rising and you know, growing up in the segregated South and becoming a, a professional and a pianist and, a, and, a, and, and rose to become Secretary of State. And everybody was thrilled. Why? Because that's a story that every American appreciates. Every American. Mona, do, so, you, do you think that women will identify with Hillary? Because she, she entered the governor's mansion in the late 70s. She's been a creature of politics ever since. She's not your typical soccer mom. Will, 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 will women relate to her? Look, some will. I, I think there's no question. Some will say, yes, I'm going to support Hillary because I want to see a, a woman in the White House. And, you know, fine. Good for them. Um, but I think that, that the, the biggest problem that will dog her, frankly, is that she's so inauthentic. You know, and, and that comes through all the time. She's always sort of packaging herself. And, you know, there are ironies upon ironies, too, that um, somebody with her particular marriage and her particular troubles 
should be claiming to speak as the you know icon of feminism. You know, this is a woman who took it as her job or her her avocation at least um, to to uh, suppress bimbo eruptions and uh, and to spread dirt about women who did come forward with uh, stories about her husband. So. No, I don't know. Her uh, feminist credentials seem a little tarnished. <laughs> I- I'm biting my tongue so hard it hurts, so I'm, I'm being very <laughs> careful here. Got a long campaign to go, and uh, it, according to the polls, we've got till January 2025 to work this subject through. And the, wor- <laughs> the word that made me hesitate was the word inauthentic. That's surprising, Mona. Uh, you've hit a word that makes me, uh, I drop my paragraph, because it says everything. There, there it is. That's the problem I'm struggling with. I'm for Mrs. Clinton because that's my generation. And I figure one more hurrah, one more grab at the brass <laughs> ring, whatever the metaphor is. You know, here we go tripping into a golden pond together. You, you understand. Mark. Fine. Sure. And Bill, Bill Clinton in the background, the first grandfather, you can see him getting a little fuzzy and wandering around in the garden <laughs> and having the Secret Service leading back to the rope line. You understand. All of that. That is wonderful to contemplate. But the word inauthentic, there, therein is the problem. Because in my experience in life, some people see that and they can't get past it. They just get stuck on it. Me, I always vote for fakes. I'm, cold, I'm good with that. I understand. <laughs> However, I'm, I'm wondering if that, if that counters identity politics, Mona. Well, we'll, we will see. There there is also this sense of entitlement, and I think that might actually be a story that we'll watch unfold in both parties' primaries, because on the one hand, you have Mrs. Clinton, who is presenting herself as as, uh, it's her turn, and you have Jeb Bush um, suggesting that it's his turn, and there is a a just, you can almost hear the the gears grinding among voters in both parties saying, wait a minute, no one asked us. You know, and, and and we get to decide this, and it is not, I mean, to quote Martin O'Malley, who may indeed be getting into the race on the Democratic side. Martin who? <laughs> Former governor of Maryland couldn't even oh, get oh, his successor oh, right. elected. Oh, right. <laughs> He's on milk cartons in the Maryland yes, exactly. area. I see. Concept. Thanks so much for clarifying. Uh, no problem. Uh, uh, but he did indeed have a good line, which was that uh, that the presidency is not a toy to be passed back and forth between two families, um, which, you, you know, I think does resonate. Um, uh, uh, po- po- political science for just a moment, Mona. The Democratic Party has done very well, thank you very much, for a long time with that gender gap. And it's going to be very large in this cycle. We can anticipate it. Mrs. Clinton's campaign is resonating already with the Democratic majority. No matter her errors, no matter the wayward server, she enjoys overwhelming support, and I believe the polls. However, the question here about the gender politics, is that enough to win a national election? Mr. Obama didn't rely on it. He had a lot of other tools. Does Mrs. Clinton have other tools? Well, I don't see any. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't have any accomplishments. Um, she, uh, you know, she was uh, she was a, I suppose, an adequate or but fairly um, fairly uh, uh, invisible uh, New York senator. Uh, a, a post that that she got basically right from the White House and on the strength of uh, of the the presidency um, of her husband. Um, and then she was an unsuccessful candidate for president, and she was a very bad Secretary of State um, who will have a lot to answer for. Um, uh, her, her great accomplishment was the reset with Russia. So, uh, do we need to go on? Um, and Libya and Burma, yes. Yeah, well, exactly. I'm, yeah, it's just so. I mean, yeah, you know, it's a long it's, list, a long yeah, list right, of, yeah. of, um, of disasters. Uh, qu- a qualified lack of success. Okay, fine. Sure, fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, l- let's move to domestic policy because just a moment here. Uh, Pac- politics. Mary, if I say to you Mrs. Clinton's domestic policy, does anything come to mind? No, and I think she's going to have a hard time because the Democratic Party has moved so far to the right. left of where the Clintons were in the 90s, so she's going to have to satisfy that far-left populist Elizabeth Warren-like base uh, but at the same time say no, but I'm actually different and I'm not going to pursue right. the same policies that President Obama has pursued. Mona, can Mrs. Clinton wear uh, Elizabeth Warren's mask and get away with it in the Democratic Party? 
No, absolutely not. Um, partly because, um, just for personal reasons, I mean, she uh, has has taken so much money from Wall Street. She's so connected with with huge businesses and conglomerates, and taking money from countries all over the world. Um, no, it it, <laughs> it will it will be, she will be laughed out of the arena if if. She Attempts, as she has tried already a little bit um, to uh, uh, to don that uh, particular mantle. No, it won't. It won't fit her. And by, and by the way, one other thing about the about the women's vote. Um, let's not forget that it's already on the wane. Um, in 2014, it was not nearly as successful that war on women meme and so forth for the Democrats as it had been in 2012. So, um, so she, she's she's not riding the crest of that wave gender politics and nothing else that's what i'm hearing from both you and mary it's yep. gender politics and nothing else correct mary yeah it sounds that's like it. it so mrs clinton's launch on saturday I mean, will be i'm a woman by, by that logic I, I i could run for president mona could run for president yes and fine I'd good candidates you, mary good, yeah, oh well good, likewise good, mona. good candidates although y- y- i understand i just want to make sure that we've got one line her her turn or my turn or it's time that's the line that's the line that's going to be on the stage with her on saturday or sunday mona is that correct it's time that's it not her turn but isn't it aren't we ready for a woman isn't it time for a woman president mona charon of the national view online mary kissel of the wall street journal editorial board and opinion journal and Hillary Clinton anticipated to be a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency within hours. I'm John Batchelor.